dollars. So we know that uh, special interest countries, in particular countries like Pakistan or Afghanistan that are not particularly friendly with our country, are slipping through here under the disguise of and under the uh, all this other uh, activity that's going on where these families are given up and, and the Border Patrol uh, resources are being compromised. So it's, it's easier for them to slip through this private property. And uh, that's just one example. And uh, more recently, uh, uh, within the past two weeks, some Iranian money was found in a bailout vehicle. So we know they're coming in here. So you heard it right there. These Texas Border Patrol volunteers are finding some very bizarre items and witnessing some strange occurrences on the U.S. side of the Texas-Mexico border. I mean, they're finding things like Muslim prayer rugs, Iranian cash, and even Islamic to English translation books, again, on our side of the border. Just another example of how this unconstitutional exodus towards amnesty provided by the Obama administration is a total recipe for disaster. And in my opinion, this is the beginning of the end of our republic. All right, we're going to take a quick break right now. But when we come back, I will be joined by author John Potash. And we will be talking about the U.S. intelligence infiltration into the rock and roll scene. This was in the early 1960s and how they introduced drugs into our society as a social control mechanism. And as you're about to find out, video didn't kill the radio star. It was our federal government. Infowars Nightly News will return right after this. Stick around. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. This gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? Think about it. This is Darren McBreen, and I want you to break the matrix at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. And listen to The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on your mind. Your liver can be full of fatty deposits, built up toxins, and even dangerous objects known as liver stones. We worked with the top developers in the field of detox to take tried and true herbs and other compounds known to safely cleanse the liver and fuse it with the latest research and technological development on concentrating these ingredients to give you the maximum effect. Liver Shield is the only liver support product on the market that uses a patented Spigerex blend of powerful organic herbs that support detoxification. And when you visit InfoWars Life, See the instructional video on how to do a six-day liver detox. This isn't a game, and let me tell you, the results are dramatic. Liver Shield is totally organic and made of the safest high-quality herbs. But that said, you need to consult your physician before you do the full detox. Liver Shield can also be used daily by itself for overall upkeep of the liver. Secure your Liver Shield today exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com for the lowest price available. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash and gonna feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. 
We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car I'll run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockouts it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. And it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. Once again, I'm your host, Darren McBreen, and I am looking forward to this next segment because there's no doubt in my mind that the U.S. government has been involved in drug trafficking for a very, very long time. And I've always suspected that they're also the ones responsible for introducing most of the hardcore drugs into our society to begin with. I mean, if you think about it, this is the old familiar game of divide and conquer. And what better way to control a society than having half of them walking around dazed and confused, sedated and disoriented most of the time. Not to mention that drugs are also a very good tool for blackmail, frame-ups. You know, they, a lot of these guys are sent to jail because of drugs. And don't forget the destruction of the family unit. And as you are about to learn from our next guest, the use of drugs has been instrumental in the social control of our society by the global elite. And we're joined now by author Potash, and he's here to talk about his groundbreaking book, Drugs as Weapons Against Us, the CIA's murderous targeting of SDS, Panthers, Hendrix, Lennon, Cobain, Tupac, and other activists. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thanks so much for having me on, Darren. Hey, well, back me up on this, because uh, during the intro, I was just saying how our federal government is, well, they've been responsible for drug trafficking for a very, very long time. For one, what proof do we have of this? And, and does that mean that this whole war on drugs is in a, in a fraud? Say it isn't so. Yeah, well, I talked to CIA Station Chief John Stockwell in 1990, and he confirmed to me that he was flying uh, opium on Air America planes from Vietnam into the United States for the CIA. And he said that that continued uh, in the, and that was called the Golden Triangle back then, that area of the world for, because it was the best area of the world for growing poppies, which produce opium, which produce heroin. 
And in the 1980s, the most popular area in the world for growing poppy fields and opium, which produces heroin, was the Golden Crescent. And that's the area around Afghanistan and Pakistan. Which has reemerged as the, the number one spot right. for growing the poppy fields again, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And John Stockwell said that the CIA was then trafficking heroin from that area to the United States and to Europe. And he, he was still working with the CIA and then had friends in the agency after he left the agency that confirmed that. So that's some of the evidence. And there's much more evidence than just that. But yeah, it's, it's, you know, there's so much evidence I show in my book that yes, the CIA was the largest Okay. Uh, drug trafficker in the world. All right. So we know the CIA is responsible for drug trafficking, but do you think it's more than just about the money or is their goal and their intent to have a drugged up society? Yes, it does seem to be about social control. And I, in uh, 1991, I talked to former U.S. Attorney General Ramsey Clark, who was a U.S. Attorney General under President Johnson. And he said, and I asked him about drugs and the government, he says he thinks the government uses drugs to sedate and divide the masses. And I've got much more, you know, evidence and confirmation from many other people that that's the case. And I show that, of course, in my book. Well, I thought it was very interesting, and, and I haven't read the, the book in its entirety yet. It's, I'm going to, because as I started reading it, I'm definitely going to finish this soon. Um, Rob Dew, our... News director said he's finished it and he said it's excellent. So I'm definitely going to finish you. it. Thanks so much, now, sir. we're talking about CIA's MK Ultra. It's no secret that they used LSD and other drugs in experiments. That's all declassified. But do you think they used LSD as a weapon against certain individuals? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, I, I not give just a experiments. Lot of I mean, they're using this as a mm -hmm. weapon. Oh, yes. And uh, some of the examples of the evidence supporting that are the fact that uh, A.E. Hotchner, who was a longtime editor for Ernest Hemingway, uh, he wrote in his book, Blown Away, about the fact that uh, MKUltra Deputy Director uh, Robert Lashbrook took to London loads of LSD and, and lots of money to give grants to a lot of different groups all around London to and assigned agents to get LSD in as, as many uh, musicians' hands as possible. And I argue and show the evidence of that that was for promoting, uh, for the musicians to promote acid to the masses and to hurt the minds of those musicians they thought were potential problems in terms of being political. Well, and you also talked about how, like, the Beatles took ACE, uh, took LSD covertly, that it was given to them covertly, and also right. an FBI agent gave Mick Jagger LSD for the first time. Tell us more about that. Right. So this, Robert Lashbrook came to London in 1965, and that same year, uh, John Lennon and George Harrison were having dinner at uh, George Harrison's dentist apartment, and um, at the end of the dinner, they, they begged uh, John Lennon and George Harrison and, and their partners, their partners testified to this in, in articles and in mainstream news articles that uh, they begged them to stay for coffee. And so when they drank the coffee and were done the coffee, they said, we got to go now. We got to see this friend's band and we're late. And they said, no, you can't drive. The dentist said, you can't drive because you just had LSD. And George Harrison said, what's LSD? And John Lennon said, it's a drug. You know, and John Lennon was furious that they were just dosed with LSD. Now, two years later, Mick Jagger was having a party, and according to A.E. Hotchner, who interviewed his girlfriend um, and interviewed a number of other people, Mick Jagger was the last holdout in the Rolling Stones to use acid. And he was also very anti uh, the Vietnam War. He was started going to uh, Vietnam War protests. And uh, an undercover FBI agent, according to uh, London Daily Newspaper, actually came to that party, um, gave Mick Jagger his first hit of acid and people convinced him to try it for the first time. And then hours later, after he, he had been tripping, uh, police came in and busted them. Him and, and, him and Keith Richards. Him and Keith Richards, yeah. yeah. And they were then under legal authority's thumb and made life a lot tougher for them. Well, uh, and I'm also curious that you think that the CIA might have actually been involved in the murder of John Lennon. Now, we know uh, yeah. that the FBI definitely, that, that, that he was considered a dangerous man and a threat to the establishment because God forbid he was out there preaching about peace, but do you yeah. think he was targeted and he could have been murdered by the CIA? 
Yeah, and this comes from a, a legal attorney named Fenton Bressler. He was a British attorney who was a, a crime reporter for a daily London newspaper. And he did a seven, eight year study uh, investigation of Len Lennon's death. And he came to that conclusion that the CIA had actually uh, developed uh, Mark David Chapman, basically hypnotizing him and using drugs.